Hey guys, Crazy King 58 here. Today I'm back with another video. Today we're doing a different kind of video. We're doing a more educational video instead of your traditional gaming videos. Um, so today we're doing a video on the circulatory system, as you can see by my nice periodic table title. Um, uh, so we, you should see a diagram on the top left page of the heart and blood vessels. And um, yeah, so let's get right into this. So the blue side is the um, deoxygenated blood, which contains the veins, venules and capillaries. And then on the right is the oxygenated side, which is, um, contains the arteries and arterioles. And then down below is the um, definitions of which, which are linked. So if we have the veins, they carry oxygen, which is low, of, low in blood from the body um, back to the heart for reoxygenization to circle the body again, and that repeats itself. The venules are small branches of a vein that receive blood, which is also low in oxygen, from the capillaries and returns it to the heart via the veins. Capillaries. These connect the arteries to the veins. These blood vessels carry oxygen and nutrients to individual cells throughout the body. Arteries. These arteries deliver oxygen-rich blood to the heart and to tissues around the body. Each artery is a muscular tube lined by smooth tissue, a tissue which has three layers. The intima, which is lined by the endothelium. The media, which is a layer of muscle which allows it to take high pressure from the blood supplied by the heart. And finally the adventita, which is a connective tissue anchoring the arteries to nearby tissues. And again on the oxygenated side is, a, um, or is arterioles, which as you can see by these little squiggly lines which are nicely drawn in the diagram, uh, they can uh, they contribute to maintaining the mean arterial pressure. They do this by increasing or decreasing the diameter, which also regulates the blood flow in the organ. So these um, open or um, I guess increase and decrease in diameter, which allows blood to flow through slower, quicker, faster, and slower. And um, now you have the features of a blood vessel, which include like the wall size and the lumen. The lumen is the hollow, um, the hollow area inside of the vein or artery or blood vessel even, which allows the blood to get through. So um, here we have a table which I made. So we have the arteries which have a thick and muscular wall to withstand the pressure that the blood um, or the heart pumps the blood at. And then the lumen is small. And then the vein has a thinner wall and a large lumen. And the capillary have a very thin one cell thick wall and the lumen um, is a very small only one cell can pass through at a time these features are suitable to transport blood for example the walls are um, of the in the arteries are thick to withstand great pressure of the blood from the heart the lumens help regulate the blood pressure and again here's the definition of lumen if you haven't got it already Okay, and um, now we have substances transported by the blood. So we've got glucose, which um, is dissolved in the plasma of the blood, and amino acids um, are mostly dissolved in the plasma of the blood, depending on the amino acid, because not all uh, not all of them are dissolved in plasma. And then cholesterol is transported in lipoproteins. Same with fats; they are also transported in lipoproteins. Oxygen is transported in the hemoglobin of the blood and sodium chloride is dissolved in the plasma of the blood, as we'll get to that later. Okay, now we have oxygenated and deoxygenated, and we have a nice diagram of the heart. The blue side is deoxygenated and the red side is oxygenated. So as seen on the diagram above, the heart consists of four chambers, the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle, and um, all in which the blood flows. So blood enters through the right atrium, which is here, and passes through the right ventricle, which is down there. The right ventricle pumps blood into the lungs where it becomes oxygenated. The oxygenated blood is then brought back to the heart by the pulmonary veins, which are right here, not to be confused with the pulmonary artery, um, uh, which enter through the um, left atrium, which is right up here, because they're going into there. And then from that stage, the blood is pumped into the aorta, which is up here, and then through these is distributed throughout the whole body. Okay, moving on to the structure of the blood. So, um, or on the third and final page, so the four main components which make up blood is plasma, 
The plasma carries water salts and enzymes. It, um, we've mentioned it carries salts through the um, substances. Um, it is Its main role is to take nutrients and hormones to different parts of the body that needs it, or that need it even. Uh, red blood cells. The red blood cells carry oxygen from our lungs to the rest of our bodies. Uh, white blood cells um, are part of our immune system which help to fight infections and other diseases and they're made up of phagocytes and lymphocytes. We'll get to that at the last segment of this um, kind of educational video. And then we have the platelets which help prevent bleeding by plugging and clotting the site of injury creating a scab. So now we're moving on to red blood cells versus white blood cells. Red blood cells transport oxygen to your body's organs and tissues, whereas white blood cells help fight off infection and other diseases. About 1% of your blood is said to be made up of white blood cells. Okay, now we're moving on to the white blood cell side of things, the phagocytes and lymphocytes. Phagocytes protect your body by ingesting harmful foreign particles, bacteria or dying cells. This process is called phagocytosis. The phagocyte includes many types of white blood cells to help kill the harmful bact uh, particle bacteria or dying cells. Lymphocytes are involved in an adaptive immunity. This is when the B cells um, create an antibody when a pathogenic cell is um, released into the body and um, it makes an antibody specifically for that and um, when it does that, um, when a similar pathogenic cell comes in or the same one, it recognises it and sends the antibody after it. So um, the, um, uh, the B cells which produce antibodies are used to attack the invading bacteria, viruses and toxins, and all toxins. The T cells destroy the body's own cells that have been taken over by viruses or that have become cancerous. And that pretty much concludes um, what I've written down. Yeah, so um, I hope you have enjoyed that video and this has been Crazy King 58 and I'll see you dudes in the next video.